to six laps. Hard to cool it down. You can actually see there's a hole there. I think they're trying to imply that on my Lego model. <laughs> Some actually let the driver release air. Hi guys. Hi guys and welcome to my YouTube channel and today's video I'm John with Veli So today we're going to be reacting to Formula 1 Racing Explained for Rookie and I just recently reacted to Formula 1 Team Radio and reacting to that video I loved it like obviously I watched another Formula 1 video so that video is like my first love for Formula 1 Racing but watching that video I had a lot of questions like okay what is this race about how many laps are they doing why did this car damage so fast? Because I, I literally noticed some crashes, like, it was just a little touch, but the car, like, the effect they had on it was, like, severe, like, a massive effect. Like, I had a lot of questions that I couldn't answer myself, so I was searching online, so I saw this video. So, this video is going to explain to me what the Formula 1 race is all about. Like, do you have an understanding about Formula 1 racing? Not really. This part of the world is still actually, the main spot we focus on is actually football, wow. which is soccer. <laughs> and we literally have little understanding of other sports, so... This is like a first time experience for us and I hope I understand a lot from this video guys And if you're new to this channel, this is Marcus TV, please give this video a big thumbs up Hit the bell icon to get notified and I'll post a new video guys And please stay tuned to this channel because I'm going to be uploading more and more of Formula content guys Without further ado, let's get right into this video today guys Over the course of the next 66 laps 66 laps <laughs> I think this does have to be the like the most laps I've ever heard of 66 laps. Wow. wow. Yeah, of the world. You've been hearing about F1 too, right? Yeah. Cool. Let's talk about it. Formula One racing into Miami for the first the time. Hottest ticket and town. Look, Tom, drive to survive. Drive to survive. Drive to survive. This is a car race at yeah. over 200 miles an hour. In cities all over the world. Miami Grand Prix. All right. Wait, how fast is this Formula One car compared to a normal sports car? Like all these Lamborghini and uh, rally cars ahead. I'm used to rally cars. Like, how's the engine like? Is it like, does it have a normal engine with rally I or doubt. normal car? You doubt, right? I doubt. Because the whole build is like yeah. so different. Like, the, the car is built for speed. Yeah. Do you understand? The main purpose of the car is it's for, for speed. speed. I think it will be faster. Yeah. So, please, how this question I have, like, my mind, please, if you know about it, you can also comment down in the comment section, guys. company or does every other car company have their own products in formula one yeah like a toyota formula one a bmw formula one the ferrari formula one or is it just i think most the one company produces all the workers i think most companies we've heard yeah. about have their own formula one really? but there are some companies that are just you know basically on formula on one, formula one. Okay. That's all me I'm thinking from my own opinion because I saw a Lamborghini. Oh, you saw a Lamborghini sign, wow. you know, their logo on it. Oh, you understand? I saw it, so I was like, more sense to me you right understand? Now. But there are some other logos that I saw there that I didn't even recognize. Nice. So I feel like most of these big companies 
have a stake in the Formula One, yeah. while the rest are just, you know, they just stick to it. I would like to say to you, Formula One. <laughs> If you're new to F1, you might know it's American Cousins. NASCAR, NASCAR yeah. has mm -hmm. the least family resemblance. Closed cockpits, oval tracks. IndyCar and F1 look more related. They've got the spaghetti-looking track, open cockpits. But there's one really important difference between these two. And it's the reason why F1 specifically is such a big deal. In IndyCar, all of the cars use the same frame, or chassis, the DW12. So the competition here is mostly in how you race that car. But in F1, every team has to design and manufacture their own cars. Mm. And the best part is that they get to improve the cars between each race, or not, depending on how they do. So the competition in F1 actually centers around the car itself. Not just how you race it, but also how you build it and rebuild it again and again and again. Mm -hmm. This is why I love F1. It looks like the sport of Daredevils, but much more than that. It's That's the BMW. I saw the logo on his head. Okay, so the logo on yeah. his head. Yeah. Sorry, it this Benz. Sorry. Yeah, I even saw it on the uh, yeah, airport. Okay. Okay. Airport. Each team yeah. races two cars, so two drivers for the same team. Each event or Grand Prix is three days: practice, qualifying, and race day. I watch these on TV every time they're on, but this was the first time I ever got to see it in person. Got to see the car up close. That was awesome. Now I am. Truly, I have never had more fun than this and seen less of what was actually going on. So right now they're about to do a practice. Here's how this works. The order of who does the fastest lap on qualifying day becomes the lineup at the starting line on race day. Ooh. And mm -hmm. passing isn't easy, so the where you start is a really big deal. Yeah. Depending on where drivers finish, they get different numbers of points. After 10th place, no points for you. Not so for you. Drivers want to... I was also imagining like, who will agree to be the last small... On the track. Yeah, but so if I qualify, qualify like, okay. <laughs> so you are the one determining your position. Themselves to win something called the drivers' championship, but teams want to get the most points total really? to win the constructors' championship. The two championship thing actually kind of makes for funny mismatched incentives sometimes. You can hear it on the radio when teams have one strategy, like they want to let drivers pass each other, and drivers get really mad about that. Maybe quicker, that three. But generally, everybody agrees about the big things, which are drivers, race your fastest, teams, make the best car. <laughs> Alright, here's the fun part. Lego is here. Hey, here's look. There's my driver. Hello, Lewis Hamilton. Uh, think of an F1 car like an airplane upside down. Both men to move as quickly through the air as possible, right? But where an airplane's wings work to lift it up, these cars' wings work to keep it down. Mm. Why? Because winning doesn't just depend on going fast. It also depends on keeping control. And that requires a firm grip on the ground. Take a look at the shape of this car. Now watch how the air moves across it. See how some goes above the wing and some squeezes the long way underneath it? That creates a situation where there's higher pressure above and lower pressure below, sucking the car toward the ground. That's actually happening all over the car, not just on the wings. And we could talk for hours about the design features on this thing, how they shape and use the air. Some pull air in through the car to cool it down. You can actually see there's a hole there. I think they're trying to apply that on my Lego model. <laughs> Some actually let the driver release air, lessening that downward pressure and allowing them to go faster in order to pass. Kind of like a Mario boost. You can actually hear this in a race. Listen for DRS here. Now, Charles Leclerc is going to have DRS to try and fight it back. Taken together, an F1 car is just a symphony of aerodynamics. I actually got to see them up close and personal when I was in Miami. Where we're going there. I absolutely did not keep up. You can see teams perfecting these cars over the years, mm -hmm. understanding the need for wings and adding them and changing the shape and pushing our understanding of aerodynamics to shave off just fractions of a second. Hundreds, sometimes thousands of people work on this, all for one team. So, um, how much does this cost? Okay, that's, that's a big question here. F1 teams don't really want to share the details here, so there's a lot of speculation. 
but they're also companies and some of them have to file their financials somewhere. So with a little bit of research into various European countries reporting requirements, hold on. Dun, 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 dun. Here they are. Annual reports for every F1 team I could find. Which is actually 8 out of 10, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. Pretty good. As a fan, this is kind of cool. Like, look, this is this is Toto Wolf signature. What I learned from all this is that running an F1 team costs anywhere from 95 million to 425 million dollars. Wow. That's a lot of money. But the year after these were filed, F1 instituted a new rule saying all teams were only allowed to spend 140 million dollars. So these reports are going to look a lot different for this next coming year. Oh, good. Still a lot. No matter what, F1 teams spend a ton of money. So, what do they make? These reports show that F1 teams make approximately nothing. They run surprisingly close to break even. Red Bull, for example, made 230 million in revenue and then add these two up, 229 million in costs. And they ended up with approximately 1.2 million in profit. This is in pounds actually, so that's $1.5 million. These aren't the wildly profitable enterprises I was imagining. So why do they do it? Well, take a look at this. This is the Ferrari annual report. Our brand image depends in part on the success of our Formula One racing team. The racing team is a key component of our marketing strategy. It's advertising. Advertising? Uh, advertising. It's great. They use F1 to sell other stuff, whether that's luxury sports cars or a sports drink. Red Bull gives you wings. I mean, as entertainment, F1 is incredible. But a lot of people do feel that it's somewhat wasteful. How much does a Formula One car cost? 400 million. Is it worth all that money? This is bigger than F1. It's kind of crazy to think about how much work we as a species put into entertaining ourselves. But I think what makes F1 feel particularly acute for some people is the technology element here. All of this engineering work and all of this energy being spent on 20 fossil fuel reliant cars makes people wonder sometimes if that energy might be better spent elsewhere. Like literally anywhere else. But F1 is more than just entertainment. It's better thought of actually as one giant experiment. F1 pushes everything to the extreme. What do you need to create to compete at this level? To keep control at these speeds? To keep the driver safe in these conditions? The idea is that the technology that they build ends up trickling down to all of us non-race car drivers. My question was, is this actually true or does it just sound good? I wanted to find specific car parts that were developed for F1 and then ended up in my car. But the more research I did, the more complicated it got. People often talk about paddle shifters, for example, but those were actually developed decades before F1. F1 teams just made them better. Same for active suspension, anti-lock brakes, traction control. What I found was that F1 was less trickle-down and more flywheel. F1 combines technologies that might already exist and then pushes them to an extreme, making them better in the process and then inspiring, or literally manufacturing, better tech for all of us. For example, take thermal efficiency, the percentage of energy from combustion that actually makes the car go, as opposed to being lost to heat. Most combustion road cars have a thermal efficiency between 20 and 30 percent, which means only a third of the energy actually makes the car go. F1 cars can't refuel during the race, so there's a very strong incentive for them to be efficient. They're at about 50 percent now, thanks to new hybrid engines, gains that have been dragging the rest of the car industry forward. Or data collection. Sensors on F1 cars collect huge amounts of information and then feed it back to the driver and the team. They didn't invent a lot of these systems, but they use them in ways that they've never been used before. And that's actually getting more and more important as we move potentially towards self-driving cars. This is the real promise of F1, and it all stems from that original requirement to build their own cars. Basically, we'll do all of this research and development, and we'll create new technologies, and also combine all of the cutting-edge tech, and we'll push it to its limits and develop it further, and you don't even need to pay for it. We'll race these things against other groups of engineers doing exactly the same thing in this crazy round-the-world sport that lots of people really love that is actually, at the end of the day, the biggest, most expensive group project science competition of all time.
people debate whether or not we should spend money on lots of our efforts to learn. And yet, they consistently push forward both the tech that we actually use and our understanding of the world around us. In this case, it also makes some money and it's fun to watch. I think once you see the promise of F1, it allows you to think differently about lots of things. We need people working far beyond the edge, like pulling forward the limits of what we can do. The question now is what do we need to learn next? If F1 pushes forward car innovation and the future of cars is electric, does F1 need to get more electric too? And if F1 doesn't go more electric, does it get farther and farther from its original promise over time? Less applicable to the technology that we use and more a novelty. Oh, let's go watch those cars that use gas. I don't know. Now you're up to speed. You can watch a race, you can enjoy it with your friends, and you can also speculate, like the rest of us, where it's all going to go. I'll be watching with you, and I'll be rooting for my favorite team. Like, I noticed this on this wall. This video actually answered a lot of questions I had, and even more, I didn't even know what the question like. It's an eye opener. Yeah, and like, I didn't even picture how much they spent in making this whole race oh, come lot. through, like, this event to be held. Yeah, really so I was even imagine no wonder, like, you don't get to see a lot of F1 race track everywhere, like just anywhere. But because it's really, really expensive. One thing I really can't wrap my head around is the fact that she says they are yearly profit yeah. from the whole <laughs> business, one point something million, million uh, which is pounds. pounds no, one point five four um, million pounds, but which is dollar, dollar one point five. five. And it's surprising though. Yeah. For me, I feel like it's surprising. Why would I spend a whole lot of yeah. 100 and something million to make, uh, to make a million? Okay. So I think this just actually just for research purpose. It raises um, conspiracy theory. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> I feel it's actually pushing technology, like the competition yeah. is like. No, on that, yeah. on that side, it's yes, making it's money um, technology get better and better. There's something the lady says, right? Yeah. It says, that currently we are pushing more to electric cars yes, yeah. and gas cars, but F1 are not yet adapting to that um, concept. That's so the question is Are we paying to come and watch full cars? Do you understand? Yeah. So that's why well, I you know a lot of people actually mm -hmm. enjoy watching them. Don't talk electric cars, they're like people that drive electric cars that actually know women are like, how will you drive a car? You can only hear your like your engine, so engine like Boom, pop, 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 like imagine you buy a Ferrari, like a very very expensive Ferrari, like you cannot like hear that super that car sound. sound, like it's disappointing, so yeah. I think there's another fun again watching the Ferrari car, yeah. so a lot of people, that, a lot of, actually a lot of car lovers, they mm -hmm. actually like uh, like Ferrari car and one or not automatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they may like it, but that's no. It's not about whether we like it. It's yes. about the you know the suggestion she brought. Yes. Is F one promoting what it is suggesting? Yes. Because they're saying F one is not for profit. That it's it is for innovation. But the track of um, cars we're having now is not actually in line with yes. it. That's, yeah. that's where the conspiracy theory yeah, comes in. in. What is going on? on. <laughs> Like this is a lot, yeah, this is a lot of so, well. Because according to her, we don't really know much about it. You say F1 is the one dragging innovation to you know automobile section. So, so if that is what is driving it, it's just like saying um someone is coming from this lineage but is acting differently. Yeah. You understand? You're yeah. acting you're acting one kind. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, this is an eye opener. Yeah. And this is actually a very interesting sport. I've been a fan to racing sports, but not just F1. Like, I've been watching rally for a very long time. So, like, this is like a new step into F1. And I think it's a good step because I'm like finding it more and more interesting. Exciting. I think my journey into it will reveal a lot to me and how things are done in the world of F1. And I hope you guys join me in this journey of my exploring and venturing into F1 <laughs> for your own reason, guys. I really enjoyed this video. Like me, like, actually, I find this video very educative as well. Yeah. Please give this video a big thumbs up. Hit the bell icon to notify. And Philip here also have a channel. I will be keeping it down in my description box down below. So please go check out his YouTube channel as well. Have a safe day. And please don't drive reckless. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.